Hurricane Imelda is slamming into Bermuda tonight with 100 mile per hour winds, but the tropics are not done. After Imelda races into the open Atlantic, we're already tracking at least one new area that could become the next tropical storm as soon as next week. In this video, we're going to get into all of that, but first, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more tropical weather updates. So here's what the NHC has right now. Hurricane Imelda is a category two hurricane with winds of 100 miles an hour. It's racing off to the east northeast at 22 miles an hour. Now, the NHC has issued their last advisory on Hurricane Umberto. It's actually merged with a front and is not a tropical cyclone anymore. And on the satellite imagery, you, you can barely see where it is because it's pretty much merged with the frontal system. Now, Hurricane Imelda is still tropical, but it is heading straight for Bermuda and is supposed to bring some hurricane force winds there tonight. Here's a look at the cone for Hurricane Imelda. We have current winds at 100 miles an hour, but then those could increase to around 105 miles an hour or so as it moves over Bermuda tonight. There is a hurricane warning in place across Bermuda with those extreme winds expected. If it makes a direct hit as the cone is projecting, they'll pretty much get the the maximum winds as the center goes across and some extremely large waves, potential storm surge, and some significant damage. After it passes Bermuda, it's gonna become a more extra tropical storm system. So it's gonna merge into that same frontal storm system, but it'll remain hurricane intensity all the way till potentially Friday before those winds start weakening down as it continues off as an extra tropical storm system over the open northern and central part of the Atlantic. Now, here's the key messages for Imelda. We have Imelda is expected to bring damaging hurricane force winds and large and damaging waves to Bermuda when it passes near or over the island late tonight into early Thursday. Significant hurricane force gusts are likely across Bermuda even after the center passes. Because, And I'll show this on some of the forecast models. The maximum winds are on the northwestern side of the storm, which is, that's typical of, an, of a more extra tropical system. That, that's what happens. Instead of the strongest winds being on the eastern side or northeastern side, it, it actually switches. Also, heavy rainfall could cause flash flooding across Bermuda tonight into Thursday, and swells and high surf from Imelda are still expected to produce dangerous marine conditions and rip currents along much of the east coast of the U.S. and the western Atlantic during the next several days. Uh, so those waves will continue. But here's the Euro model on windy.com. We have, we're expecting at 2 a.m. eastern time across Bermuda, the Euro model is showing 93 mile an hour winds screaming out of the north across Bermuda. And these are sustained winds, not not even looking at the, the wind gusts. Let's see, those will be a lot higher, potentially 112 miles an hour, potentially category three hurricane wind gusts, not the sustained winds. The su sustained winds are expected to be around 100 to 105 miles an hour. There could be the potential that it, that it goes up a little bit higher, but but still looking at that range, the, the wind gusts are what's gonna be even stronger, even 117. So maybe approaching 120 mile an hour wind gusts, that's actually what the model is showing. Wind gusts over 125 to maybe even almost approaching 130 miles an hour at some point as the center goes very close to or potentially making a direct landfall on Bermuda. And then those wind gusts will continue even all the way into 8 a.m. Eastern time, still looking at 70 mile an hour wind gusts over Bermuda. And then those wind gusts do come down, but still the wind field is, as we zoom out, you can see the, the wind field because it is becoming more of a frontal system. Those winds expand out and we could still be looking at 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts across Bermuda, continuing all throughout the day and even into the evening tomorrow on Thursday. So then those wind gusts will keep going for a while. And then we finally see that as it as it moves off to the east, we, we see that more extra tropical look where you have, a, you know, this warm front here, more of a, a cold front. And then the around that area of low pressure on the on the northwestern side is where we see our strongest winds. Now, here's another look at it.
from the Hats A model. We see it goes over Bermuda tonight into Thursday. Also, this was Hurricane Umberto, and then notice it has turned into an extra tropical storm system, and then that continues off to the north and east, and then Imelda also becomes extra tropical, more like two frontal systems connected together, and then that moves out in the same direction off to the northeast and then it it really turns into an occluded area of low pressure starts weakening down but but then it could actually start re-intensifying this weekend into early next week as a as an extra tropical storm system we'll have to see what happens there but that's pretty much it for imelda after it passes bermuda it's going to be an extra tropical storm system but what happens after imelda there's potentially at least one or more tropical systems that we might have to watch. These are the ensemble models showing what might be happening in the tropics. And you can see here's Umberto, here's Imelda. This is around right now. Then notice what happens over the next couple days. Start seeing Imelda moves off to the northeast as a extra tropical storm. Then, as we go later this weekend into early next week, by around October 6th, we have two areas to watch. We have this tropical wave out in the tropical Atlantic. This one looks like it has some significant potential to, to develop. Then we also have this storm system off the southeastern U.S. This could also be part of a stationary front that might, that might start to break down. We see tropical development out of that. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, but... They're showing potential for a tropical system trying to trying to form off the southeastern U.S. or off the east coast of Florida. So we'll have to watch for that. And then also another storm system near the Yucatan Peninsula. So the tropics are still active with a lot of uh, potential. And then, but notice this main tropical wave is actually intensifying on these ensembles. A lot of them are showing significant development. Now the weaker ensembles are keeping it further south and west, pushing it towards the Caribbean. The potential for impacts there but the stronger ensembles depending on if if it intensifies pretty quickly it could end up turning out to the open atlantic and becoming a fish storm that would be a a good thing for the caribbean still looking at potential development you know off the east coast of florida and also in the bay of campeche around the yucatan peninsula the southern southern gulf but this disturbance out in the out in the main development region continues to show potential for development on these ensembles over the next 10 days we're seeing you know development possibly starting early next week and then going all the way through through the week and even the next weekend going to october 11th so this is some pretty significant development potential out there in the tropics and another thing to notice is the mjo this is the euro model showing that the MJO is actually getting more favorable. We're watching for the Atlantic, even the Eastern Pacific, but but mostly the Atlantic. We're seeing the MJO is getting more favorable starting by the middle of next week. Even later next week, we're seeing the MJO getting very favorable across the Atlantic. And this is extremely favorable going to October 10th and October 11th. Even as we go towards mid-October, it stays quite favorable. So that's that's going to be something to watch that will make things more conducive for tropical development. And the Clem Prediction Center in their latest Global Tropics Hazards Outlook from yesterday, they were showing from week two, October 8th to October 14th, 2025, they're looking at a... 20% chance of tropical development out in the main development region headed potentially towards the Caribbean or it might turn and also a 20% chance of development in the uh, Central American gyre region near the Yucatan and also the southern gulf as we go through October this is an area that can produce uh, tropical activity so far this season it hasn't but still something to watch and then also week three looking at October 15th to October 21st things get more favorable over the Central American gyre region with an over 40% chance of potential development. So things are still active out there. And then here's a look at the GFS model showing what's going on in the tropics. We have Umberto as an extra tropical cyclone that reaches all the way up to the, the North Sea, like, like the UK and Iceland later this week into the weekend. And then Imelda also follows, but it, 
it pretty much falls apart before it does anything. But then we have this right here. This is around Tuesday, October 7th. We're looking at an, a tropical wave, an area to watch in the Atlantic. But then this one, the GFS model is keeping it weaker and further to the south and west. So it does actually hit the Caribbean. Like if it stays weaker at first, then it it's going to go further west. It's going to hit the Caribbean. And so that is a potential scenario. And the GFS model is showing by Friday, October 10th. Now, this is this is very far out. This is 10 days out. So, of course, we don't know that this is going to happen. Like, the forecast models can can change quite quickly at, at, at this long-range time frame. Even just a few days out, they can change a lot in terms of track intensity, especially in the developing uh, stage of a tropical system. But this is what the GFS model is showing right now, showing a tropical system hitting the the eastern part of the Caribbean, and then it starts to pull north. Then it goes over Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic. Then we're seeing a powerful Category 2 or hurricane, maybe even getting close to a Cat 3 by October 14th, just east of the Bahamas. So that same kind of storm track strikes again. We had Aaron, we had just now Imelda, several storm systems taking this similar track without without hitting the U.S., interestingly enough. So we'll see if if this one does the same thing or if it keeps going further west. Last but not least, the AI Euro model uh, showing what happens as we go from the early to middle part of next week. You notice that tropical wave moving through the main development region. Then as it starts hitting the northeastern Caribbean by October 9th, October 10th, then it again starts making that turn. We also see a lot of frontal activity. That's the big thing. We're seeing a very active non-tropical weather pattern with a lot of extra tropical uh, frontal systems. And you notice that potential tropical storm gets pulled north into some of that before we also see another, another area of low pressure behind it. And then maybe something else in the main development region going into October 16th. So the tropics are not done. There's still a lot more potential activity, even after Hurricane Imelda. So that's it for this video. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out. Thank <laughs> you.